Rhiannon Willis is having a checkup to make sure her eyesight is okay. She's doing well now, but this is her a Hello. few years back. Rhiannon nearly lost her sight to cataracts, but doctors here at Murfield's Eye Hospital carried out a life-changing operation. This is the very moment Rhiannon and her mum discovered she could see for the first time in two years. Maybe? Oh, yeah, uh, oh wow. Rhiannon's operation would not have been possible without research. When it was set up in 2006, the National Institute for Health Research recognised the importance of translating research from the lab and using the findings for NHS patients like Rhiannon. The other funding agencies are not terribly interested in questions like one dose of chemotherapy for breast cancer or six doses. As long as it works and they've proved it works, that's the end of the story. But for us, as a woman, if I get breast cancer, and after all, one in eight will get breast cancer, if one dose of chemotherapy will do the trick, then why should I drag up another five times? So we want to do the applied research that really makes services better for patients. The NIHR is injecting much-needed cash into research right across England. The government's investment in health research will top £1.7 billion each year over the next few years helping to make this country a world leader. And the NIHR is leading the way by bringing together NHS organisations and universities. In the UK, we have significant advantages over America. We've got a single-payer system. The health service is a much more consistent platform in which to do that kind of research. And we have some immensely powerful universities as far as research is concerned. So my view is that we will be the best place in the world to prosecute this kind of research activity. And that will ultimately lead us to have clinical care for patients, which is uh, amongst the best in the world. The NIHR has already linked some of our leading universities with the NHS to form biomedical research centres and units. These aim to speed up the translation of lab-based research into clinical practice. Cambridge University Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust and the University of Cambridge are focusing on obesity and diabetes. I think the NIHR uh, is a very exciting concept. I think it's the first time really that the National Health Service has grasped the notion that high quality biomedical science is a really necessary uh, core function of the NHS. And together with the enormously strong uh, uh, other funders in the UK, including the Medical Research Council and the charitable sectors, the Wellcome Trust, as a team, this is a really strong and perhaps, like we hope, unbeatable team. One of the NIHR biomedical research centres is here at Churchill Hospital in Oxford, where clinical trials into diabetes takes place. Patients, medical staff and researchers are all in one building. The laboratory is just a short walk away. I took part in the trial, me and a lizard, a healer monster actually. They discovered that something it produces can make human beings produce insulin. So they injected me with it. I thought, well, maybe in future they could use it and give it to children that they wouldn't have to have injections. The trial paid off. The saliva from the poisonous Gila monster lizard helped to develop a successful diabetes drug. Clinical trials need volunteers, and the NIHR has set up research networks across the country to recruit patients. The NHS provides decades of patients' data. We've developed this new case register as one of the technology platforms for the BS, BRC called CRIS and what it means is that researchers can at a few strokes of a computer keyboard identify uh, people who might have the potential to participate in research studies. The South West has one of seven NIHR collaborations for leadership and applied health research and care, better known as a Clark. Again, researchers in the medical profession are working together to improve the way the NHS adopts new treatments into everyday practice. I came across a general practice that had found uh, an extremely good way of um, preventing falls in the elderly by the use of vitamin D supplements and had shown a dramatic reduction in admission to hospital with fractured neck of femur. What the Clark process enables us to do is to investigate this rigorously so we can apply that learning more generally and potentially reap huge dividends relieving patient suffering but also cost savings for the NHS. 
As well as investing in new research facilities and infrastructure, the NIHR funds a wide range of research programmes. One of the funds I'm in charge of is called RISC, or Research into Innovation, Speculation and Creativity. And for this we actually put the peer review process to one side because we want to encourage a rich variety of early ideas uh, with a view to should we back them uh, in case they discover or develop something which we can then put into a much bigger study for a breakthrough. A recent success to hit the headlines has been the world's first eye gene therapy for inherited blindness. The breakthrough by the UCL Institute of Ophthalmology and Murfield's Eye Hospital was partly funded by the Department of Health and took place in one of the NIHR biomedical research centres. In the first instance we've done this in a very well-defined disorder that affects only a few individuals. What we hope is that these kinds of treatments may also be relevant to the treatment in the future of very common blinding diseases such as uh, diabetes and age-related macular degeneration. And these are conditions that affect millions of people. For Stephen Highworth, the gene therapy transformed his life. This is him navigating his way through a maze before surgery. This is him six months after surgery, sailing through. We've been very innovative and using the Catalyst NIHR funding, we've been able to actually partner with charities and other charitable fundraising to actually increase the amount of uh, funding that we have. So again, the NIHR money has been extremely important for us. One of the things that's very striking about the NIHR is that it has been able to achieve a really remarkable reputation in a very short time frame. And I think the main reason for that is the really profound impact it's had on a whole culture of clinical research in the UK that was waiting to be done but couldn't be done because there wasn't the leadership or the resource to make it happen. For Linda and Rhiannon and millions of others, the National Institute for Health Research is one of the big hopes for the future health of the nation.